Hi, welcome back. I hope you've got all the pieces that I told you about in the last episode so we can get on with our jigsaw puzzle for a child. Now we're going to be using either a fret saw or a coping saw to cut out our puzzle. These saws both have a frame between which a blade is, uh, is held nice and tight by the spring in the frame. The blades are thin and narrow and that means that as you're cutting you're able to turn corners with them. Now the fret saw blade is thinner and it is narrower as well so we can get much tighter radiuses with that one and it's uh, much more suitable for jigsaw puzzle work. They are a bit harder to get hold of though so you should better get a coping saw at your local DIY store and that will at least give you an idea of what we're doing. Now, to help support the work when we're cutting it, we're going to be using a little bit of wood that I told you to get hold of, about 4 inches by 8 inches or so, and about half an inch thick. And that's going to make a little stand. So the work that we're going to be cutting sits on top of the stand, and we can use the saw to cut it. So it supports the work nicely as we're cutting. Now the work support is going to be attached to the piece of 2x2 two two that I mentioned and if you're using it off a tabletop then we'll connect it so it's all in line and then you can clamp this section of the 2x2 two two onto the top of say a table or a desk or maybe a kitchen countertop and you can have the work support hanging off the edge where you can use it. If you've actually got a workbench though it's much better to put it in one of the vices bring it up nice and high that way you're able to work standing up, which is a little bit easier I feel. So how do we make the support stand? Well, as you can see it's basically just a piece of wood with a bird's mouth cutting the end. You don't need to cut that first, you can actually cut that with the coping saw or the fret saw once you've mounted it to your 2x2. Two two. Now if you're mounting it for uh, work on a tabletop or a countertop or so, you'll mount them in the same plane, just mounting the work support on top of the 2x2. Two two. And because of the grain directions, a couple of holes, a couple of screws in there be absolutely fine. No need to worry too much about that at all. You could even glue it. But if you're going to do it in the way that I use at the workbench where it's in a vise, the work support is attached into the end grain. So you see I've got two screws in here, they're nice and long, so even though it's into end grain, they'll hold that nice and firm. So once that's screwed in, we'll cut the bird's mouth out. Now I've done this one already. As you can see, it's fairly easy. You can just mark it with a pencil if you like, little V, saw in the V. So two cuts with your coping saw or any other saw you've got, gives you that mouth, which is then the support for your work. So the workpiece goes on top of the support, over the V, and we can start cutting. And cutting is just moving the saw up and down vertically and you move the workpiece in the direction you want to cut. And you see with the fret saw how tight a radius we can actually cut with that. With a coping saw, exactly the same thing. Because it's a bit coarser blade, getting it started is a little bit trickier, so light touch, maybe start at a, an angle, then bring it uh, nice and perpendicular. You can't get quite as tight a radius with the coping saw as you can with the fret saw, but it's good enough for a large jigsaw puzzle. Now for kids, I tend to go for something that looks a bit like an animal. So I've got something here which vaguely looks like a pig. I'm not very good at drawing animals. And I've cut this one with a coping saw. So you can see, because the kerf is a little bit thicker from the saw, the pieces are a little bit loose. The alternative to that, which I tend to prefer, is a jigsaw um, from a square or an oblong, which can then be painted afterwards with a design on it. Now alternatively you could stick a photograph on there before you cut it and you'd end up with uh, a photo jigsaw. Now the design of your puzzle is entirely up to you. 
The one thing that we should remember from what we learned last time is the strength of wood going with the grain and going across the grain. In the direction of the grain is nice and strong. So the grain going this direction, for this jigsaw key, we can make the neck quite narrow and it's still nice and strong. But when we cut the next ones, which are going to be going across the grain, we want to make those necks a lot thicker, a lot wider. Otherwise they're going to snap off easily. So just bear that in mind when you do your design. Anyway, it's time for me to finish cutting this piece out. Now I love cutting these out by hand with the fret saw, but if you prefer a power tool for it, then you need a scroll saw. Now a scroll saw is basically a machine that moves a fret saw style blade between a couple of arms that move up and down like so, and you use the table as the work support. Now safety with the scroll saw is important. The blade is under quite a bit of tension and it will break occasionally so you should be wearing eye protection and it can be a bit noisy so ear defenders are a good idea. The blade cuts on the downward stroke so it should be pulling the work down into the table the whole time but occasionally it will try and lift it as well as it comes back up. So the main thing to do is to hold your work down firmly to the table. Now I've got the blade pointing out towards the right hand side of the machine it's just the way I prefer to work. It can point forwards as well. The important thing is that the cut you're making should always be fed into the front of the blade, never sideways on the blade, because that's where it will bind and it will break. Now, whichever method you choose, do send me some pictures of what you make. I'd really love to see them. And next time, we'll be looking at a halving joint. So I'll be introducing some new tools, and we'll be able to make a frame, something like this. Cheerio!